you have such huge divergence, which uh, all economic theory would have argued over time would have led closer towards convergence, but there's no sign of that convergence, and we still sit within uh, the union. So uh, there has to be equitable sharing. It is a very integrated economy, as we discovered in the times of COVID. Uh, the fact that labor and capital moves, it moves from the north to the south, so there is an interdependency. In some senses, it sharpens the federal, uh, it, it's, it's a sign of a sharpened federal tension, but also a sign of deepened federalism. So how do we balance these two tensions as we go forward in a fairly fraught environment? Uh, I, let me take the simple question first. Right? I mean, I think certainly we have many examples of societies where income taxes or direct taxes happen at multiple levels. So, you know, uh, both KTR and I lived in the U.S. for many years. The federal government takes some tax, the state government takes some tax, the city of New York takes some tax, the city of Los Angeles takes some tax, right? These are all uh, in, independent of each other. So certainly at some point we have to say that the power of direct taxation has to be given to the states, whatever the constitutional need for that is. But there's a broader problem here, I think. In no federal society are all people the same, right? Like uh, economically, you'll always find better offs and less well offs. The unique problem of India and why I said to the 15th Finance Commission in my submission, written submission, I said if equality and efficiency were the targets of finance commissions, then you all have been miserable failures for 25 years. Because every other society in the world, every other country in the world, the US, China, European Union, wherever, you take funds from the better off, you give it to the less well off, and whatever the measure is, it converges. You know. Um, longevity, uh, health measures, per capita income, education access. It converges. That's what the transfers are supposed to do. In our case, not only it doesn't converge, not only it doesn't stay the same, not only it's diverging, it's accelerating in its divergence. So the ratio keeps changing again and again and still the, the outcome gets worse and worse. Let's just take Tamil Nadu's case. At one point, we were roughly 7-7.5% seven, seven of the population, 7-7.5% seven, seven of the GDP, got about 7% of the tax devolution of that 32% that they devolved. Now we are less than 6% I think of the population, about 10, 10.5% of the GDP and we get about 4% of the taxes. That means for 25 years these things have been going the wrong way and we are not getting convergence. So there's something structurally wrong. And what's structurally wrong is not with us. What's structurally wrong is in those northern states where despite getting massive devolution, despite getting massive transfers, they are not able to improve the quality of people's lives, the average education access or the, you know, social development indicators or human development indicators. So, if your measures on which you allocate, you know, you know the formula for the uh, finance commission, some population, some gap to actual, you know, all these forest cover, land and all that. Clearly, they are allocating the money on the wrong dimensions because they keep on allocating more money and things keep getting worse. So there's something profoundly wrong in the developmental model of the northern states, particularly the Hindi belt. That unless that is fixed, no matter how much money you transfer, you're not going to be able to fix the problem. You can do politics with it, but you can't improve people's lives unless you find out what that is. And one, I have written in my submission, one main thing they can fix is empower women, ensure girls stay in school, delay marriages, get them, you know, better health outcomes. And they haven't done that. That's really, even a state like Gujarat, that has slightly higher per capita income than Tamil Nadu, 50% or so of the girls around 18 are not in school. That's not true in any southern state. Right? So there's something structurally wrong that money can't fix, that needs to be fixed some other way. Otherwise, uh, we're just keeping on going the wrong way. No other country, no other union in the world has this bad an outcome. I, I completely agree with him on how miserably they have failed in the north. But they come here and lecture us, by the way. You have to admire their temerity. You have to really admire their guts and temerity to come to the south, lecture all of us on how to run our states and how to actually administer, and how miserably we have done vis-a-vis -vis them. The, when the fact is, all the indicators, no matter what you take, all the human development indices, all the social indicators will show you otherwise. There is, I think what both of you are saying gets to the heart of the governance issue. 
Um, and there is a lot to be learned. That's why federalism matters so much from what different states are doing. So the country learned from the midday meals. The country also learned from Bihar's attempt at giving bicycles to girls to try and bring them, uh, get, get them to secondary schools. And in all of this, I think one aspect that we haven't talked about much is, and you brought it up in your initial remarks, the, the question of deliberation, that at the heart of federalism is the idea of coming together to dialogue, to deliberate, to share, to learn, and evolve solutions to these very wicked, hard problems. Constant attempts in our history of trying to create these so-called sites of deliberation. The Interstate Council, which is now a punishment posting for the bureaucrat. Uh, the Planning Commission, everybody said, had all was filled with all kinds of problems. The National Development Council did not work, so we created the Niti Aayog. But then we left it to the finance departments, or the Ministry of Finance, rather, to do deliberation with states. Uh, the GST Council, which was meant to be a site of deliberation, it works sometimes, it doesn't on other occasions. How do we think about this institutional question? Are, there, is, are we missing something? And what kind of space do we need for states to come together? The regional coming together, of course, is full of learning. The southern states coming together, the northeastern states coming together. But there's a lot needed for this deliberative environment to come together. Um, is it an institutional problem as well as, as much as it is a political problem? It's precisely because I'm Indian that I worry that all the money is being thrown into a well and no development happens in UP. Right? It's, not, it's not the money that I begrudge. It's that hundreds of millions of fellow citizens are not getting development, are not getting growth, are not getting access. So, it, 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 it is because of patriotism. I'm not saying I don't want to give the money. I'm saying we are, just like KTR said, we are happy to contribute. We are well off, we are lucky, we have been well governed. We are educated, we want to help. But we should get something that helps our fellow citizens. If we keep on transferring the wealth and it keeps on going into, you know, nothingness, into smoke, that's what we are concerned about. It's, it's, it, how do I say this? If it was just a zero-sum game that says who gets more, who gets less, etc., then it's a pointless debate. Why do we come to public life? We're not, you know, just trying to, it's not like going to a casino and, you know, rolling the dice, right? There should be some uh, future vision of a better tomorrow than today. And that better tomorrow, it is hard to imagine a country where hundreds of millions of people get left behind and yet there is a better tomorrow. They also must participate in this. And th that's a state problem, but the union trying to dictate a one-size-fits-all as the disparity increases is an exercise in futility at best or some kind of, you know, uh, I don't know, um, megalomania at worst. You, Emily, go ahead. I just had one, one, quick, uh, <clears throat> one quick point. You know, I've been a minister for eight years. I've been a minister in the state for eight years and uh, Honorable Prime Minister and his team have been in Delhi for the last eight years. You talked about divergent India. You talked about how India is so different, how heterogeneous it is, how everything is different in Northeast, West, East, South, etc. How many times has this government in Delhi made an effort to actually make us sit together, because Prime Minister keeps talking about Team India. How many times has actually Team India sat together and tried to learn from each other? If Tamil Nadu is doing something very good in health, should I not learn from it? Should I reinvent the wheel? I don't think there has been a single situation where this government in India tried to actually say, listen, there are some good things that have been done in some pockets of the country. Why don't you learn from each other without reinventing the wheel? That has not happened. 